And today I wanted to talk a little bit about Azure SQL Database and the DTU and vCore pricing models and talk a little bit about differences, similarities, and kind of what they, they uh, both mean. To begin the discussion, I do want to uh, point out that uh, with Azure SQL Database, if you're using either DTU or vCore pricing, the underlying service really is the same. So I just want to make that clear from the beginning that uh, the difference between DTU and vCore really has to do with how the service is built and, and how you um, allocate databases. But the service underneath it is, is the same regardless. So as a point of background, uh, the DTU model or database transaction unit was the, the one that was first uh, introduced with Azure SQL Database. And a DTU really is a, a measure that is a, it's a blend of CPU, memory, and I.O. And so the idea was to create this measure that would give us like a relative idea of the amount of uh, power or resources behind the database. So the higher the number of DTUs, the more powerful database we had. And the range of DTUs went from five DTUs on the low end up to 4,000 DTUs on the high end. Uh, but there was a lot of confusion about, well, what exactly is a DTU? I mean, that doesn't really mean much to me. Uh, and after a while, Microsoft um, kind of acknowledged that, okay, we're, we're getting this question quite a lot. And so they introduced uh, the vCore pricing. And vCore really uh, is short for virtual core. And it's a model that, quite frankly, was designed to be, make it simpler to translate kind of your on-prem hardware resource um, specs into similar specs on the Azure SQL database platform. Uh, so, so for example, when you're pricing by vCore, you have some visibility into the actual amount of RAM that's available to you. You also have some idea of the type of processor and the speed of processor that's being used on the hardware. Whereas with the DTU model, all of that is completely um, uh, just part of the service and you're not really aware of any specifics about those things, for example. A couple notes on, on each of these is that uh, it's important to know that in both cases, you are uh, the databases are priced, let me say this differently, the service is priced per database. Uh, and so that's the same whether you're using the DTU or the vCore model, it's per database. Now one key difference between these two models is that with the DTU model, you pay one fixed price for your compute, when you know, your, your IO, your memory. Uh, your data storage and also your backup retention. Whereas with the vCore model, you actually do have separate charges for your compute. So what type of node uh, or, or compute power are you using? And a separate charge for your storage. Uh, and so this is a, a way for, if, if you want to use the vCore model for you to kind of manage your, your, your uh, costs and have a little bit more flexibility with managing your costs than you do with the DTU model. It's important to know that you can switch between the DTU and the vCore model, so you don't have to choose one or the other when you're getting started. You can, you can go back and forth between them. Now, of course, uh, the question is gonna come, well, which one should I use? I wanna use Azure SQL Database. Should I use vCore? Should I use DTU? Um, and of course, that depends. Uh, the DTU model is definitely simpler uh, as far as uh, the number of options that you have and the number of levers to pull, so to speak. Uh, so again, it's that one fixed price that includes everything, whereas with the vCore model, you have a little bit more flexibility and, and transparency into what you're paying for. Uh, so for simplicity, uh, the, the DTU model is going to be um, have an advantage. Um, the DTU model also, uh, if you're just getting started with Azure SQL Database, offers more options at the lower end of performance. So you can get started at a lower price point on the DTU model than you can with the vCore. Um, so that's one thing to, to consider. Um, and if you have software assurance with Microsoft, uh, there are some advantages there with using vCore. So if you're familiar with software assurance, this might mean something to you as far as pricing. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you don't have to worry about that. And you should um, maybe look at the DTU model. I hope you found this information useful. If you have any questions about Azure SQL Database or the Azure Data Platform, please reach out to us and let us know.